And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> we're back. We are one Mercedes <sighs> short. One we Mercedes are short. <laughs> and we're back. We had a little hiatus and we're happy to be here. Black and white conversations. I'm Honey in Lancaster. I'm Lu- Brandy Glanville. Lucas Lucas. <laughs> and Butters. And Butters. Butters had a little moment of anxiety yesterday, so he's got his little thunder coat on. What does a thunder coat do? It just makes them feel like they're getting a big old hug constantly. Oh. And it, it just, they're little dogs, you know, it just kind of hmm. calms. It's an anxiety jacket. I need one of those fuckers. <laughs> just wrap me up. So today we're going to be talking a lot about Brianna Taylor, about her settlement, about what they did with the the officers. Was it right? We have a lot to talk about. Let's get into this now. So the settlement, twelve million. So well, let's yeah, well let's get into. I mean, first of all, that was a short court case. I mean that that was settled very quickly for lawsuits go on for years. But was it quickly concerned that this uh, that this has been going on for so long in the midst of in the midst of nationwide rioting and protesting? Quickly for her, I'm saying her specific suit because mm-hmm. these suits can be like dragged out for years and years and years i mean it was i mean thank god for her family that it was that quick but sometimes it's like oh it it just it drags but i think it's a nod to um ownership and i think at i mean accountability isn't still an issue here because the police themselves have still not been prosecuted but i think that the police force is saying there were mistakes made and that is and that's why the settlement was so quick quote unquote six months six months yeah we just are we're just missing an element the the actual civil case has been settled mm-hmm. before the criminal case has been you know even alleged well they put the the officers on administrative leave which to me that is not punishment i mean it's like okay we're just going to give you a time out and you're still getting paid and you still have your pension right and that's a huge thing for for police force to have your pension because that takes care of you years after after years retired from the force then we have the cover-up because the the officer who had a picture taken i I can't remember exactly but it was a picture taken like within the time frame of the uh, incident and he had a a camera on him oh he had a body cam he had a body cam and they said they didn't have body cams and and that's why there was no video so I, i haven't heard the answer for that one yet what, they, what's up with the body cam? Also, they said that the um, the, the boyfriend um, didn't actually shoot the cop. They they think the boyfriend said he didn't shoot the cop. It was a bullet from another police officer, which makes sense. Which makes sense, Erica like Shea. right? Mm-hmm. So they're they're trying to make this guy out to be a bad guy for protecting his his home, which right. any of us would do. I mean, right. anyone right. anyone comes into my house, especially if they're not dressed like cops, like in, a, in the middle a uniform, of the night. In the middle, I'm if I had a gun, which I don't, I have knives. I will kill you. Um, <laughs> yeah, these police are are guilty of some other crimes, like uh, actually firing a firearm into an establishment. It, there's no police training that teaches them to shoot into windows. So actually, the cops, some of the cops, jumped outside the apartment and basically start shooting through the patio I door. Didn't hear that. And wow. that that goes against all training. You never just shoot into a building. So there's a but lot. There's all sorts of cover ups happening here. Because, there's a cover up yes, here. Yeah, yep. and, and it's not really sophisticated. And uh, and these guys are real slow with their information. That. I don't think they realize they're being watched. If you watch Fox News all, all day, you would never know that, that the police are being watched from a, a reform standpoint, that we were looking at better ways of handling things. The guys who wrapped the guy with the head, who was, he needed help. Who are we talking the about? The guy with um, <laughs> We wrapped the guy's head. Um, you know where the guy was in the parking lot um, up in Wisconsin? He called, the guy, brother called the police and said, my brother's having a fit. In the Walmart. Oh, 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 yeah. And, I get to hear and about they this. Shot, and the police shot him. Oh, you haven't heard about that? I haven't one. heard about that. Is this recent? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. This is why. He, he, <laughs> this is why we, we don't watch the news. This, this is why I don't watch the news. It's, 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 it's the argument for reform, meaning 
let's take some of that money and have health professionals be the first responders as opposed to police. They're just not prepared to be the first responder. I, so I have I have a few thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. So so uh, Louisville, Kentucky has spent over forty five million dollars in police lawsuits over the past few years, and this includes wrongful death. You mean like the settlements? Mm-hmm. They wrongful, paid out. This is public, publicly disclosed settlements. So I think we have to be careful because there are also settlements that are happening right. under cover that confidentiality. Just exactly. Yeah. So these are settlements around wrongful convictions, um, police officers creating false evidence, wrongful death. Sexual harassment. Mm. There is a whole uh, host of wrongdoings that the departments are currently paying to cover up. So when we set, so that's why the discussion around okay, yes, a twelve million dollar settlement. Of course, her parents deserve some sort of compensation Absolutely. for the injustice. But how much is a life worth? Mm. How much is this going? How much are you going to pay people to go away? Exactly, and be without, quiet without changing the actual right. system. Fuck, I mean, I just feel like, I mean, there's so many things about this situation mm-hmm. that are corrupt. And a lot of those cops that were involved in these lawsuits are still police officers. Right. That's that's the, the biggest part that I don't get. If you mm-hmm. are, you know, they get, oh, you know, the, what did they get? The warnings or they have like, you know, three complaints before. One complaint and that should be investigated and then you either have your job or you don't have your job. Like you you can't have four warning or four complaints of Exactly. You know, I just don't understand why these cops are given so many chances. And information shows that excessive force leads to murder. Cops who have a history of excessive force and violence are the same ones who are eventually the, the ones. ones who have killed somebody. And when you pull up their records, you can see the history. So once you see, like you said, one example of excessive force, let's nip it in the bud. Right. You're done. You're you're no longer, you know, yeah. on the police force. Mm-hmm. And why this is a, I always thought about this. Like, why don't we train our officers to shoot, not shoot to kill, shoot them in the arm or shoot them in the hand or the leg? <laughs> why are we shooting them in the heads and the chest? Like, why are we doing that? I don't I don't understand that mentality. You want that guy down? Shoot him in the leg. There is a disrespect for human life. Yeah. We can talk about it further. Black life. <laughs> like there's no respect for black life, which <clears> is the which is the impetus between the Black Lives Matter movement. If there was respect for black lives, yeah. then so many of the victims of police brutality would not be black. So. Well, when you when you when you look at it from why do they shoot not shoot him in the arm or why do they only shoot him like in less arm, um, I guess dangerous areas. The problem is they're only using guns with one demographic of people. You got God, you got certain mm-hmm. other demographics where it, 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 the guns never pulled. Right. You have retreat, you have professionals called in. I think just recently, uh, it was it was filmed to how the the police know how to use restraint. They know how to wait. They know how to to give a situation time to calm down. Mm-hmm. However, they choose not to. The will is there. It's just too much evidence that they've been trained properly. It's just the will to expend the same amount of um, respect for every demographic mm-hmm. equally mm-hmm. is that's that there it is if you, if you don't have the will to you're just going to protect take your and out. serve every demographic equally then there's the answer then you shouldn't be doing this police job and, and the other thing is the cops do know they're being watched like they know there's <laughs> there's body cams they know there's cams in mm-hmm. the car they know everyone has a cell phone you just got your car stolen and you have a video of it like there's cameras every all the doorbell cameras like we like we're all being watched at all times at all like times. everyone's being watched so the the blatant disregard for the fact that they just think they're above the law is it, it, it's just mind boggling. Mm-hmm. And and like you said, I was looking at police reform. What are we doing about it? They're not really doing anything about it. Exactly. There, there's no there's no big plan underway, you know? And I'm just, I was trying to figure, I was, I was Googling, I was looking and I'm like, well, what what are they doing about it? Cause they're not doing anything about it. It's a side of the times. But th- this is the time where the time. we are under a microscope. We need to make the change happen. So we can't we can't ha- stop having these conversations, right? Just because you know we're afraid of COVID or we're afraid, you know, you know one, you know, Brianna's mm-hmm. family got twelve million dollars. It's not over. That's just the the beginning, and we have to keep the and conversation keeps, going. Yes, and it keeps coming back to 
what about the cops? When do we charge the cops that killed Breonna Taylor? Yeah. And as I was going through research to look and look at the settlements, none of the cops are really charged except for the cop who killed George. Justine uh, R- Rushik, who was in Minnesota and was a wrongful death. And that cop was black. So mm. I hate to like pull, I hate to keep looking at the racial sides it's, of this, but it's very interesting that of all the wrongful deaths in the, in the lawsuits and her family got $20 million and he got 10 years. He is one of the few cops so, ever um, charged and found guilty for a wrongful death. She was so a white he, woman too. She was a white woman. And so now he is, he is appealing, um, the charge, and, it's, and I'm not saying that he should get off. What I'm saying is, let's figure no, out right. why he is the one person out of who, all of the people, out of all the people who got charged. But I think with the George George Floyd, we we demanded it. We were not gonna. Mm-hmm. We there was no way that that was gonna. That's that was the beginning mm-hmm. of the change. But we have to keep demanding it because it's like I mm-hmm. feel like the conversations are. I'm not seeing it on TV anymore. I'm not. I'm not. But let's talk about George Floyd because if we if we really look back, Eric Garner was killed in the same manner in the same respect. He was paid five point nine million. His family was paid five point nine million for his wrongful death. Those cops were not charged, Mm-mm. and so now history repeats itself. A few years later, we don't know if those cops will be charged. We don't know what that settlement's going to look like. But what we do know, so now what we what has happened is um, chokeholds are now barred. What is it called? Is this the um? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the. That's the one of the reforms that have been passed. So that's you know. But do can we go back? We have it on camera. We can go back and see who those cops were. Why don't we try? I mean, I don't know the statutes of the station. It's, it's, it's no, so they, called, had, they had a trial. It's, it's something called found. limited immunity. Yeah. yeah. Which says that they can't be held liable for for what they do in the, in in the line of their job mm-hmm. by being a policeman. I can't be trying to hold this man down and he dies, and then you can sue me because I was just being a policeman at the time. But suing you and wrongful death are two different things. When you hold somebody down to the point where they're dead and they're they're telling you I can't breathe. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I get it. Like, you know, if if I'm doing my job correctly and something happens, then that's a different issue. But if I'm using excessive force, right? If I'm outside of the bounds, if I'm using a no knock warrant in the middle of the night, like w- at what point do we start being start right? Because right now accountable? they think they're above the law because of that. Exactly. Well, they think they can't we're all in uproar. I mean, I mean the kid, the kid who um, shot into the police car in Compton. He thought he was that? above the law. Oh, the, you know, the two Compton policemen who were sitting at the I have Compton, heard about that. Um, I did hear about Compton that. Two Compton police officers were at the Metro, I guess it's the blue line in Compton. Mm-hmm. And a suspect ran up to the car, they have it on video, shot into the car. And um, one of the officers was just released yesterday. They were fighting for their lives. For yes, like I did hear about four that. Four or five days. And then things get all out of, oh, I mean, there's a hundred, uh, there's a humongous op. Uh, Reward. Upward. Yeah. I saw that LeBron James, um, the, the sheriff was calling yesterday for LeBron to, uh, cause he offered a reward for, um, another person that he's like, you know, somebody that was, he offered a hundred thousand dollar reward. So the sheriff was like, Will I'm calling, it? yeah, I'm calling on LeBron James to match the reward for my officers. And I mean, I think that's a little, uh, first of all, you can't, I, I mean, the sheriff, he, he, the sheriff of uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, he is just. It's just he's just sheriffs across the country mm-hmm. have traditionally are voted in, so they have this extreme power that they just do not like questioning the sheriff's power. Mm-hmm. And you know he's that whole thing with LeBron was a jab. I think it was a jab. It absolutely, oh was for jab. sure. But I, but I, and I think that piece of it is that the the perception is that. Black people are okay with people who kill cops. That is not true. But that's that what not, he put. Yeah. He made LeBron, and, and, so, and, and that's and that's what exactly that, that it was like villainizing is. LeBron. Exactly. Like, and LeBron was trying to do something good by exactly. offering. And you know, they the the sheriff was like, you know, we're we're demonizing the police force. Like, we're all like, all police are bad. Um, no, we're we're actually making them finally yeah. pay pay for what. You know these horrible wrongdoings that they've been doing and getting away with for years. We're finally calling them on their shit and saying, 
we're not going to take it anymore. Right. And if LeBron wants to offer someone $100,000 to figure out who killed someone, you know, that's up to him. Like, that's this that, has that's been happening to, to, to his people for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And it's his right. He doesn't have, like, you're yeah. going to make LeBron look like a bad guy because he doesn't want to. I don't know. I was just very turned off by the sheriff. I was he's such a bad guy. I mean, it's Is just he? like, yeah, he's just a bad guy. He's just like, it's just taking law enforcement and he he's, he just mixes in politics every day. Every day, make it political. And, and, and then with the politics meeting. It is pol- it is political because he said the sheriff has voted in. Yeah. Attorney general has voted in. The DAs have voted, voted in. So what do we have to do, people? Vote. Oh, register vote. to vote. Yes. We got to vote. Register to vote. Mail in your ballots. We have to vote. And it will come back down to using our voice where it counts, where it matters. We have to vote. Not everybody Locally. Know. Yeah. I mean, California. The local elections the count. The local elections count way more than the national. There will never be a... The Democratic candidate will always get California. Well, the change has to start, you know, with Local. us. Like, yeah, very for it to change in the bigger way we need we need to get you know the the smaller local elections we need to get the people we want in there so then we can finally like take it to the next i can't can't think right now i was gonna say something really profound Um, (laughs) but it just it went away you're always profound (laughs) the most profoundest oh well i think we'll take a break so i can have some green juice and brain juice all right we'll be right back when we return, we'll talk about our experiences with the police force, the good, the bad, the ugly. So we're going to each share some experiences that we've had with the police force. And I've had quite a few. No, I'm kidding. I've had good, bad and ugly. Um, who wants to start? Oh, Lucas, you've been the, the Lucas. I the mean, just the recently, just right the now. most it's recent. The whole thing is probably the police called me. We're, <laughs> we were still looking for the car. Um, I, to, I think okay with with the, with the theft of my car. I saw that uh, the police made me feel like it was really beneath them to go out and look for the car. Mm. It's that's beneath our value, and and I don't see them for any other value. I mean, but that's their job. They make me feel like, yo, don't you realize we have a lot more to worry about than your stolen 2002 car? And I was like, <laughs> no, I don't want to hear that you have more. I mean, what can be more important? Okay, yeah, there's way more important things. <laughs> yeah. <in my> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, but for that day, if they're there. That, that moment? Yeah, like, I go, feel like go this drive is more, around a little. Okay, this dude, like, turn the lights on and just, like, start pulling over every car. No! Every it matches the description, car, right? It matches the description. You match the description. The car well, like, matches the description of what was stolen. And we want to make sure it's not the stolen car. <laughs> that was I want not something. a good story, Luke. <laughs> I want something. <laughs> Don't start on me. <laughs> but we still love you. Um, so my house was broken into a couple of years ago, right before Christmas. So we had four houses on the block that were broken into. Um, there had been a lot of construction going on. So it was like people, you know, different people in and out all the time doing construction because it's not always the same workers. Mm-hmm. So we just, because it was a really, it's a really nice area. It was a really, you know, safe street. Um I left, I came home and my house was, it, they said it was like a smash and grab kind of thing because mm-hmm. they just tore my whole room apart mm-hmm. and they took all my jewelry, my Cartier watch, all my Louis Vuitton luggage. Like I will, I would say I would never have Louis Vuitton luggage again, but my ex-boyfriend bought me some. I, I will not buy it personally just because it just says, steal me, steal me, steal me. <laughs> oh. That's how I think. <laughs> um, but the cops were just so, they, they, it took them almost two days to come over when i called and they said oh the the guys will come out to take the fingerprints in a few days so try not to touch anything I'm like my bedroom is ripped apart there's shit everywhere drawers are open that like clothes yeah. are everywhere i'm like i need to clean it up and why is it going to take a few days right and that was it like i after that i didn't hear back from them i kept checking in with them like i was i personally was calling pawn shops i felt like they were there just to give me that piece of paper. They're like, okay, this is what your insurance company is going to need. Here you go. And mm-hmm. I'm like, but if four houses are being broken into, what if someone was home and someone got hurt? Like, right. you need to to look into this. And I just felt like it was 
beneath them. They didn't, they were there to give me a piece of paper to have the report. The most shocking thing was when I realized the car was stolen and I called 911, no one answered. It, it went from is on that, hold. Is that an actual emergency? No, but what if it had been an emergency? <laughs> what, where, this is what if. Know, this is a hypothetical that thank but God you it was. Abused. Ray, stop licking me. I mean, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yes, it was. It was no. no one. My car is gone. Someone come help me, please. I thought but, you just call a regular police. What if I was having a heart attack? <laughs> we were bringing work. Mean, but, but his, his, to his it? defense, nobody knew he wasn't having a heart attack. attack. That's true. I and mean, it went to like, you had all these numbers, like if you didn't have a pen and paper, how would you take advantage of all this information? Like call this number <laughs> if this is going wrong, or call this number if this is going wrong. I'm like- 911. 911 is something I can remember at the time, but- I don't know, would you call 911 for a, a, a car stolen? I would call 911 if they broke it. Someone broke it to my house. That's a definite oh, 911. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If my car is stolen, I mean, because it's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not an immediate threat. It's just, you know. I guess. But you I do guess, need help. Yeah. You do need help. So I could, I could see that. I I'm just know. shocked <laughs> that I was put on hold and no one ever answered well, the phone. Did they ask if your life was in danger? Because they usually ask you. Oh, the are recording. You a, are you in a safe place or? No, it was just um. Uh, Due to COVID or something, or due to reform, um, they had the whole spill for me. Um, I was like, they're letting people realize that if we keep on with these reforms, nine one one won't work. And we never got through it. I mean, I really never got through that that morning on nine one one. Wait, never did. Really? That's nuts. Because I mean, that is, like, nuts. <laughs> that is insane. Like, it got to the point where I didn't even want to call because I was like, Jesus, somebody could really need this, and I'm sitting here having oh, yeah. a, I'm on hold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tied up now on one. Grandma's so I, having a heart attack down the street. <laughs> what I was the like, hell? oh my God. I mean, I couldn't believe it. I was like, that is crazy, though. Okay, that's what I mean. That's been my light, latest interaction with the police. I couldn't get through it to a dispatcher. <laughs> that's that is that's crazy. So I've had several good experiences. Okay, but, okay, but before I start, though, I do want to say that I think that it, the central issue that comes back to police reform is being a part of community and policing the community. So that's sort of been my experiences because um, we've talked about have used the angel guidance to sort of intentionally put the boys in front of police officers right. so that they can establish a relationship and they, for, for both parties so that the boys cannot be afraid of cops and so that the cops can see like black children aren't threats mm. and that they really so it's, it's sort of a two-sided um exercise and so i've been down to the station over here several times they have um Smart. a book center for children actually where children can get free books they can sit down and read i've had officers talk to the kids about making good choices about different things i've actually um went with a friend of mine she had a situation she required police assistance they helped her talked about her issues so, you know so the times i've engaged They've been helpful. They've right. been supportive. It has been an emergency, but I ha they have really um, gone above and beyond in that they've taken the time to speak to my children, you know, caringly, jokingly, making sure they weren't afraid. They were I have a very question. supportive. Go ahead. Did you have a low cut dress on? Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you're a, a very attractive woman, and I think that sometimes cops will be a little like sometimes if i'm driving and I, like i not saying i'm attractive i'm just saying my plan is to pull my hair up and put it in it like a, like a top bun mm -hmm. i don't want to be like cute in my car to mm -hmm. give them a reason just to talk to me and pull me over okay and that sounds weird i know but i take my earrings off put my hair up <laughs> i don't want to get pulled over like i just it sounds bizarre but they do sometimes do that and maybe they're nicer to you because of your aesthetic it, it, hopefully and, not. And, and, and I don't know, because I thought that, that, I mean, it does play into how, per, how people perceive you. So if you if you see me and I'm a certain way, right. and I talk like this, and I have this, you know, people do, I mean, there oh, is, yeah, for sure. it's you social economic you, stereotypes. Yeah, you it's, can't. You know, and there's all these different things that go into that. So, yeah, so. Yeah. Like, we can't, we can't. We, we like don't, you know, there's no way yeah. to know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I think that people, I mean, we're not, I think in our show, we're not characterizing police as bad, but what we are saying is that do better. Yeah, If someone has a 911 emergency, help them. Please <laughs> answer. <laughs> and we 
that if we if we are calling for service, we do expect and require a certain not just any service, but a level of service. Yeah. But I am happy to say that I have received um, services from the police force that both gave myself and my children great experience. That's oh, a that's W. So, Anytime we can go to the police station, that's a win. Yeah, you know, on our own will. Right. <laughs> <laughs> to the front door. To the front door. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, that's a w. always good. That's a way. And, and you're going to leave it there. I mean, I'm not going to beat up on that. No, that's no. A I w. just feel like that there should be more follow through on the smaller, you know, on the smaller end. Because what if, you know, yeah, my house got broken into, but what if somebody was home? I mean, I, I, you know, what if they use your car for, you know, a, a crime now? And the, the hit, love yeah, love. exactly. What if something happens? I, I just feel like. Every everything counts. Like I just feel like just giving me a piece of paper and having a report of it. There's more to what their job entails. Yeah, you know, there's there's crime out there, but you know, we're not having murders happen like every day, all day. That if they have the time, they should try to follow through with the little things. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is their job. Or get, like, you know how they have Barbie and Skipper? They need to get, like, Skipper cops. And the Barbie cops can do, like, the, you know, they have people that do the lower level stuff. Barbie and Skipper. You know, I'm just trying to think. You know what I mean? Like Out of the box. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Literally out of the box. Oh, it is. Literally out of the box. But, I you mean. know, like, get, get cops that don't, that aren't detect. You know, they have detectives and they have, like, lower level. Yep. Like, they need the, like, they need... They, need all, they really need all hands on deck at this yeah. point. Really, it's it's all hands on deck. Cadets, everyone needs to be involved and engaging and being a part of the community. At this point, like we are at a crisis level and the perception of cops in our community is not good. Mm -mm. So yes, I've had my good experiences, but two, one out of three is not, it doesn't not good odds. So we got to call a truth on, you know, the whole war on drugs and let that all just come to us. Stop and let's get these relationships back together. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and just get, you know, where's and let the, the love? people out of prison that are in prison for pot. That's, I know that sounds crazy, but. But no, absolutely. I think it, like, or we have overcrowded jails, and I just thought about this because I looked at Lucas, and then I think about pot. Um, <laughs> but no, they're like. Non violent. Like, non violent pot. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, everybody who's. I, I just don't think jail's a place for non violent people. I, it's just that the whole concept of jail makes you violent i mean put someone into one little room think mm -hmm. about COVID. oh no it's really bad and, and right we now. all talk about oh this feels like jail no it's not jail no it's not <laughs> it's nowhere close to jail but you can understand that how frustrating and unproductive a jail cell must really be yeah mm -hmm. i mean if you don't know if you didn't know that before now you know but i mean we're overcrowded and they you know pot is legal now in a lot of the states and it's like and that's the rub Pot is legal. All of these mainly young black offenders are still have and their records impacted because of because of pot. And now millions of people are making money off of it. So yep. it's like, what about yeah. all these people? And we should be at home and you know helping, having you know, edibles, having edibles, and you know working. <laughs> you know instead of sitting in a jail cell, they can yeah. sit in the living room and watch their kids go through school all day. Maybe work on their GED while their kids are in school too. There's got to be I mean, a better so way. There's so many things you can rehab now, right? Exactly. There because has to be a better alone. way than just locking someone up for a nonviolent crime. Especially when we're spending like fifty thousand dollars a year per prisoner. I mean, imagine if you made a person stay at home. You put fifty thousand dollars into a bank account. They have to sit there and watch their kids go to school all day. So, make sure everything's all straight. <laughs> wait, I mean, so we're gonna. That wait. sounds terrible. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Homeschool is taking us. I'm just saying. Instead of having, kids do whatever. Instead of us we're having give them all these non-violent non offenders dying of COVID in jail, we could bring them in home confinement. But don't give them fifty grand. Make them go and get a job and like we're do something that, to help. We're gonna spend that regardless. But we're not gonna give them fifty thousand dollars as a present for being doing something that's not good. Well, not being able to leave is kind of like the, it's prison. I mean, that's not good either. Freedom is a crazy thing until you lose it. It's really a thin line between being free and not being free. This is true. That's I mean, true. just mentally being locked into a room saying you can't leave, is, is you don't even need chains anymore because you're just locked in here, I can't leave. That's still a punishment. But I, I think that's that piece of the non-violent offenders and then how, but police are treating everyone right. as potentially violent right yeah. and like we said it's it's there's a whole people just in the park smoking weed now you've gotten arrested right and potentially shot to or death you stole because, a car and then you get shot in the back because you're running from the police like, like you stole a car you're not like that doesn't require like you shouldn't be killed because you stole a car 
like there has to be some sort of scale on how we're um, addressing these these people, the the incidents, how the police are responding. Everything is being handled right now with an iron fist. And yeah, everything, but, terrible. Terrible. everything but Lori Loughlin. Oh my god! <laughs> everything I mean, but that white character. Guys on probation, I can't sit and ask if they can they pay run. to get into college. Like, can you just pay to get into college? I'm like, that's actually not how it's supposed to go. No nope. kids ask you that. Yeah. We were watching a Netflix movie about, um, it's called Candy Jar, and it's about getting into like these. And what did schools. you tell them? No. And I was like, you're not supposed to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're like, not supposed to. Like, you're not supposed to pay to It's get been going college. on for years and years. Right. And years. But you can, if you have the right influence, the right reach, the right contact, you can pay, to, get, you like, can pay to get in. Days? You can pay to stay. You can I pay just, to graduate. You can pay to have people do your your papers for you. I mean, I don't want them to do that. You can but. pay to have your test taken for you. I wish. That's true. That's true. I, I, again, I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't go to college. So that's all I have to say. On that I was matter. too cheap. I just, I, I just, we wanted I, to keep the money. I want to keep the money. Do some homeschooling. <laughs> homeschooling to watch the kids. Fifty thousand to watch the kids. <laughs> See, y'all think I'm crazy? Yes, we do just, a little bit, but like it's a good crazy. It's, it's going to take crazy. To get out of crazy. I think it will. And yeah. I, think, I, I also think we have to. So now it looks like we're putting just dollars on, on human lives. Yeah. And, and then we're calling it settlements and we're trying to make it go away. That's not going to work either. So mm-hmm. now what? So I don't know. Is it one person, one vote or one dollar, one vote? You know, the dollars seem to win the over on the votes. So it's, everything's about money. It mm-hmm. is actually. It is about money. And it's unfortunate. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't want it that way. But if we're going to have find a solution, it's mm-hmm. going to be money based. Uh, okay, I think we're done. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about the money. It's all about the Benjamins. We're going to end this by saying vote, learn about your local elections. Yes. Your DAs, your attorney generals, your prosecutors, all the people in charge of, of making reforms and changing the system. Let's do it. We and should come keep, up with a local voting list. Who, who we support? Yeah, well, oh. I was I was looking at that the I other like day. That. Yeah, can we endorse? You think we can all agree on endorsing the same? Well, you know what they say: if they've been in if they've been in position for more than five years, vote them out because yeah. they're part of the problem at this point. I Ooh, thought wait, about that's that. a good start. Yeah. So if you're you see, right. if you're looking at the candidate and they've, and they've been there for several terms, vote them out because they are whole, they are part, they're part of the, of the issue. problem. Right? I wonder yeah. how many people would be left if we did that. Just start with if they've well, been there longer than five years how who will be left that's what we can do next time um we have our conversations we'll we'll just for our local elections we'll get in and we'll get a who's list been together there longer than five yeah. years yeah and we'll see what their track record is because we can you can literally look and see how are they how are they operating who are they putting in what's their history and their record on on in, imprisoning minors and police violence, et cetera. So we can see what our local officials are doing. Politics fun. Woo, yeah. woo. All right. <laughs> Make sure you keep the conversation going, yes. people. Have a good one. And arrest Breonna Taylor's killers. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>